friends. Welcome back to All Things Tabletop. Um, I got a request on how I made my zinch bases in uh, the painting videos that I've been posting on the channel for my zinch army that I'm in the process of building and painting. So I figured I'd just throw this video together real quick for y'all so you can see how I did this. Um, basically, these are what's called like a lava base. Um, I'm just putting a zinch effect on it instead of making it look like it's lava under earth. It's got zinch colors. Um, now, as you can see, all three of these bases look different from each other on these whores. Um, and I will tell, I'll explain why they look different. First of all, I went with each of these three have slightly different colored paints that I use, different pinks and blues. Um, before I finally have settled on the actual paints I'm going to stick with for the rest of my army. As you can see, this is much darker than this. Um, I'm going for the rest of my bases that I do. I'm going to use these three paints, Phoenician Purple, Temple Guard Blue, and Emperor's Children. Um, I feel like this effect just works a lot better the brighter your paint is. It pops more. Um, you can see this one. This brimstone is much brighter than this one, though I really do like this effect. Now, what's also different is on this one, I airbrushed these paints on here. So it's a much smoother gradient between the purple, the blue, and the pink, even though the pink's not very bright. Versus this one, where I just painted it on with a brush really quick. So you can it's kind of like a high, a hard line between the pink and the blue, and I don't really even see much of a purple on there. Maybe y'all can, but, um, and I just don't like this as much. Obviously, you can fix this by doing wet blending, but I was, I was doing it real quick um, and didn't think that it would really show those hard line cuts between the pink and the blue and the purple, but it did. So I recommend if you don't airbrush it on, that you wet blend the paint, but you don't have to. It still looks good, but I think it looks better if you're able to do a smoother transition between the paint colors. Now, there's a reason why these two, the crackle, is quite a bit different than this one. Um, this one, you have just a, the, it did not spread out and crackle like these two did. It's much more close. Um, and just a subtle kind of breaking apart. So you get just a hint of the color popping through. And again, this is one of the reasons why I recommend you use a very bright paint when doing this. That way it can really pop because if you go far away um, on this middle blue whore, you it almost looks like you have just a plain black base. You really don't see the color shining through as opposed to these two. Um, so if you go if you like this amount of crackling, make sure you use brighter paints if you want the color shining through. Okay, so the reason why these look different than this one is glue. Make sure you use this type of glue. Um, I can't remember what this kind of glue is called. Is it PVC glue? I don't know, it's basically your school glue. You gotta go with clear, it doesn't have to be Elmer's, but just this school glue and clear is how you get this effect versus this effect. effect. Um, so basically what it does, you apply that glue in a thin coat, and I'm gonna show this here in a minute, you apply the, the, the glue in a thin coat and while it's still wet, you put the crackle paint on there. For, for these uh, figures, I'm using this Citadel Color Technical Morden Earth. Earth. Yes, so thin coat of glue, while it's still wet, you apply the Morden Earth. What it's gonna do is um, it's gonna end up binding to the paint and causing it to crackle much faster. This right, here, this right here took 24 hours to look like this. This right here took six hours to look like this. So much quicker dry time using the glue. It also shrinks it and pulls it apart a lot more. So it's gonna be this much more broken up crackle. So if you like it like this more than this, you gotta use the glue. Um, thirdly, the glue means that this paint here 
is much more secure on the base. It's going to take a lot more force to scrape off this crackle paint than on this one. This one I have to be careful. If I, you know, bang it a lot or accidentally scrape against it with my nail or another figure, I can easily scrape off this crack this paint. And then you're just going to have chunks missing and it's going to look bad. So, I personally highly recommend using the um, glue with these. All right, so let me go ahead and um, paint a base for y'all so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Back here, I have my Carrick Acolytes that I am in the process of painting for another video. Um, so we'll just go ahead and go with one of these guys that is done aside from applying the shield to them. Um, as with all my figures, they're just simply secured to the base with a sticky tack until I'm ready to do the actual basing. Um, so I'm just gonna pop them off of here and show you all the process of doing this base real quick. Um, and then we'll see the end result. Okay, so here's my base. Hopefully y'all can see it. Um, doesn't really matter what color you start with. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with purple. So I'll put a little bit of this into my pot here. Doesn't take much because I'm just using one base, or I'm just doing one base here. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it. It's a little blue, it's just my eyes, it's kind of weird. matter where you spray on the base, you can do the whole base, parts of the base, that's whatever. I just kind of make it up as I go. I do try to differentiate it base to base though. Okay, so we got some purple on there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next color. I guess I'll go ahead and do some blue. Alright, I got some Temple Guard blue in my pot. Um, this actually works a little better if you let it dry. Typically, I'll have, you know, all of my bases lined up, the 5, 10, 20, however many you are, and I'll just stick with one color, do all the bases with the one color, and then go back and apply the next one. That way they each have time to dry. Because um, if it is wet, it doesn't work quite as well. But for these, for speed's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some blue here. Got some blue on there. Um, I think I want to put a little bit more blue. So give me one second, my pot went dry. Okay, so we got purple and blue on here. Now we're gonna throw on some pink and we'll be good to go. Okay, 
So I got some Emperor's Children in there. Um, it is a layer paint. So it's, sorry, I just bumped the camera. So it's pretty thick. Um, so I did put a little center in there with it. And the blue out, there we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna blow some pink on here. Try and hold it so y'all can see. Okay, so here we go. I got these two dudes where I uh, sprayed the bases and glued them back on. So now we just need to apply this, the glue and then the crackle paint, the Mordant Earth. So I'm just gonna take my glue here, put a little dot, where I'm holding it to where y'all can see, a little dot on there. And putting our dot on the other side. Doesn't take a whole lot. It just need a thin kind of spread layer. And just gonna brush it, smooth it out here. There we go. I'm gonna get a little bit more. I mean, you don't want it to just be swimming in glue, but you do want it to at least be fairly damp with the glue, if that makes any sense at all. All right, so there, before it dries, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the more than air. I'm just gonna rinse this brush off real quick. The glue actually comes out of the brush very quick and easy because it's water soluble. Um, so it doesn't, so far it hasn't ruined the brush I've been using. All right, get this Morden Earth going, which I need to get. Ooh, got all this crackle paint. It's dried around the edges. I need to get another thing of it. It's running low. Um, and I'm just using this kind of tool here to spread it around. Get a big old glob of it on there. And hopefully I'm holding it so you can see it. And I'm just gonna put it on here. And I'm gonna start, let's see if I can hold it a different way. There we go. Just start spraying around. You want it to be fairly thick. I mean, you're not making, it's, it's not like paint where you wanna just have a th real thin layer. You want it to be actually thick like I, I don't know how to put it apply a measurement to it but also try to get it relatively even it's probably about the thickness I don't know if you can really see it on the camera but the thickness of this thing here is about how much I'm putting on there hold it so you can see kind of the layer it's not focusing well but Get some more. And just be careful, try not to get it on your actual miniature. It takes quite a bit of this stuff, so. So it's essentially for this one, this base, this 32 millimeter base, I use like three scoops of this full to get it covered. Whoops, got it on the toes. Okay. 
Um, that's pretty good. And it starts drying fast with this glue on there. So like once you smooth it on there, I don't, don't really play with it because then it's going to like kind of mess it up. Okay, there we go. Got a nice thick layer on there. You can even go thicker. The thicker you go, the more crackle you get. The thinner you go, I mean, it just looks better this, the, with uh, more of a thickness to it. Um, there is a chance that I should be going thicker on these things. Um, but I couldn't actually really tell you how thick is too thick. Um, but there's that dude. That simple. And you just gotta wait and let it dry. Okay, <clears throat> and here is the finished product. This is after about 12 hours of drying. And then I went and just painted the base of the, or the rim of the base black. It's actually still wet. Um, and obviously you can paint the rim on your bases, whatever color you like. I just like to paint them black. Um, now you will see that there is a difference between these two. This is the one that y'all saw me do um, with the glue. This one I did off camera and did not use glue. So you can see that there's definitely a difference in the cracking. It does not separate as far from each other. So the color underneath doesn't show through as well. Um, now I will say the reason why this one hasn't cracked and separated as much as this one. Um, first of all, this is only 12 versus uh, countless days, um, hours. It, this might still crack a little bit more. Same with this one since it's only been 12 hours. Um, but also because I did not do as thick of a layer on this one as I did on this one, it does make a difference on how much it cracks. Um, this is a, this was a fairly thin layer that y'all saw me put on here. Um, this one, it's fairly thin on this side. Look at the very minimal amount of cracking. Like you can't really see the paint through. This side of it, I did thicker layer and you have bigger crack chunks and more of a separation between the colors. So just as a demonstration of what it looks like, glue versus no glue, thicker versus not as thick. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Hopefully this helped y'all out a little bit on um, making these types of bases if you like it. Obviously you can always do more to them. Um, add other stuff to the bases like flock and whatnot um, or rocks, you know, whatever you want. Um, and also just playing with the thickness of the crackle paint and glue versus no glue, uh, as well as the the brightness of the paints underneath. This is still not as bright as I think I'd like it. See, it's not as bright as this. Um, I could have probably fixed this by putting, going back and doing an extra layer of those paints that I airbrushed on here um, to make it the color brighter. I just did it real quick and didn't saturate the colors really heavily on there. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's how I have been doing my Zinch inspired lava bases.